Instead of blast proofing with obsidian, try waterlogged leaves. And instead of hoppers, try using a chest boat to cut back on iron. And these are 21 cheap Minecraft hacks. And hey, according to YouTube, the fastest anyone's ever subscribed to the channel is two seconds flat. So if you think you can beat that, race to that sub button below. Ready now. And even if you subscribed after, thank you, it means a ton. Trying to build a platform in an ocean is a long process, and it costs a lot of blocks. But we can throw all of that out the window as soon as we use a lava bucket. As this user shows off, by just spilling out the hot stuff, we can convert large swaths of the water into stone. And we do it all without needing any bit of silk touch, which again, is cheaper. And for the amount of blocks that we can place with just one bucket, this gets really efficient, and it only costs a couple of buckets to have in your inventory. Just make sure that you don't misclick and accidentally convert one of them into obsidian. That's gonna be a real pain. If you're on Java Edition, never use a name tag to stop a mob from spawning, since you can do the same with five wooden planks. Let me explain. By crafting yourself a boat and putting a mob inside of it, the game recognizes it as such where the mob won't despawn while it's riding a boat, which is a lot cheaper than waiting for that rare chance of getting a name tag. Here's how to use a chest boat to cut back on hoppers, since with the way that this entity's hitbox works, we can take after this user's diagram and essentially have our chest boat stand in for a three block gap. And there you go, in this example, we already saved three hoppers worth, which is not only 15 iron ingots, but it's also three chests, meaning that we even do it for less wooden planks by using the all wood option. Now granted, maneuvering the chest boat into place to get this to work is a little bit of a hassle, but once you figure it out, it's definitely going to save your profits. And when you're building out a big hopper pipeline, that can really start to add up, so I'm glad we have the value option. Here's how you can use eight trap doors to completely ruin an ancient city. No joke, if we place down our trap doors like this and then flip them up to have a fence, then once we get the warden to summon from a skull catalyst, we can lead it inside and its pathfinding won't be able to find a way out of the blocks, at which point it's trapped. Now we can move on to phase two, which is that even though the warden spawned, it's not gonna be able to attack us. So we can use that as safety and then go and destroy the other parts of the ancient city, including the skull catalyst that originally spawned that warden. And then eventually the warden will despawn and we'll be able to explore the rest of this ancient city without worrying about hearing this ever again. And trust me, that's a weird weight off your shoulders. If you don't have a tree farm to instantly get you wood, don't worry, just pack an ender pearl. Since if we were to lay out four spruce saplings in a two by two like this, throw an ender pearl up and then bone meal all those saplings, then as soon as our mega spruce tree grows, we'll be right on top and then we could just chop all the wood straight down as we go, which is a lot faster than having to make a staircase to go up. So if you've got a steady supply of ender pearls through an enderman farm, then I'd say there's no reason not to save yourself some time and use this for your next wave of deforce station. Minecart roller coasters are great, but they sure are expensive. And you'll see as much when you try to get this minecart trail out of your mine and up into the surface. That's a lot of blocks going up. But instead, we can do this with a bubble column and a bit of scaffolding. Sure enough, the minecart and the person riding it are counted as an entity, meaning that if we have our roller coaster deposit them into a bubble column like so, both will shoot right up to the top. And then if we have a scaffolding above with a rail on top, we can catch us both and essentially make for the cheapest and quickest minecart elevator. Because trust me, an infinite water source is a lot easier to come by than an infinite gold source. Both possible, but I'd rather stick with the ocean than the nether. This design is cheap, and it's gonna save you a lot of time, because trying to convert all of your concrete powder by hand is a lengthy process. But with just a simple setup like this, we use barely any redstone and get a fully automatic farm. All we need to do is have an observer facing where we're gonna place our concrete powder, and then have that redstone output power a dropper to give us more concrete powder. At which point, we can offhand the concrete powder and put the pickaxe to mine in our primary hand. Though, if you're gonna try this, I wanna make two notes. One is that the reason we use mangrove planks here is because wood can't be quickly broken by pickaxes. So there's no risk about accidentally breaking your wall when you're getting into an AFK session. And then two is that it's actually better to use efficiency four for a pickaxe instead of efficiency five in this scenario, because a faster efficiency could desync the observer and then the system would double trigger. But don't worry, being a little slower here is not gonna be an issue. Considering that overall, this will save you a bunch of time. Here's how to kill the Ravager using only stone tools. See, when you don't have a lot, the Ravager can be pretty scary, but what it has in size and speed, it doesn't have in flexibility. Meaning that if we were to dig down a couple of blocks into a hole like this, we're able to punch up and hit the hitbox of the Ravager, but it can't do the same for us. Meaning that, in theory, we could kill this using just our fists. So I'd at least recommend taking after this user and having some kind of stone tool on hand. At the very least, it'll be helpful to have a shovel, so then you can dig down faster and make sure that it doesn't kill you before you get into your hidey hole. And then once you're done, you can get the kill and then move 
on to the next stage of the raid, putting you one step closer to that hero of the village potion effect, and in turn, cheaper trades. Block update detectors are nothing new to redstone, but while we can do this with pistons or even the observer, this is the cheapest option by far. To build this user design, we don't need any quartz, no iron, no stone even, just wood and five pieces of redstone dust. So while it might be a bigger footprint than just using an observer, it's hard to argue that this is the bargain bin approach. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. The amount of redstone trickery that's going on here is still very impressive. And it might just come in handy early game when the only kind of redstone that you got is from killing a few witches. You'll never miss another ender pearl after using this simple trick. See, ender pearls are projectiles. That much is obvious. But what you might not know is that ender pearls show you the same projectile data as a snowball. Meaning that just for the price of some snow stuff, we can find out exactly the trajectory that our ender pearl is going to land at. And from there, we don't have to worry about another misclick, which makes sure that you're not going to die in the end or the nether next time that you throw one of these. Which is good, because I think we all can agree death doesn't come very cheap. So for the price of a snowball, I'll take that to avoid it. Usually, we change the color of beacon beams by using full glass blocks, which does work, but it's too expensive. Or rather, it's gonna look expensive when you compare it to this. See, by using colorful glass panes, we can get the same effect. And considering we get 16 glass panes per six glass blocks, that gives us 16 opportunities to change the color of your beacon instead of the six that we just had. And plus, you can even hide those stained glass panes inside of the beacon beam, which I'd argue looks even better than the original option. Meaning that in more ways than one, this should be the way that you're dying your beacons going forward. Building a timer with redstone is possible, but costly. But this solves that, since by using even less redstone and even more of a big brain play, we instead use cobwebs and an item to fall slowly through the cobwebs and then drop onto the pressure plate. And there you go, by the time it reaches the bottom, you'll have roughly a minute and 10 seconds passed. So considering that other one minute timers look like this, I think it's more than worth it to give this one a shot, especially when it's this simple to set up. Let's transform your staircase at no extra cost to you. See, with this two wide staircase, all we have to do is just turn the outmost stair facing inward, and then just like that, we've got a more detailed and simple to build staircase that takes us right up to the top floor. And it's hard to argue that this isn't cheap, considering that it only costs the stairs that you already had placed there. And now we've got a railing, a staircase, and we can still walk up it just the same, making for one of the simplest build hacks to do in Minecraft. Did you know you can kill the wither using just eight dripstone? Sure enough, as you can see from this raise work video, all we need to do is summon the wither, trap it in a lava bucket like so, and then build up 40 blocks high. And once we're up there, we can look down at the wither and use a trap door and our dripstone spikes to eviscerate through its health bar. I mean, it'd be impressive to kill the wither this fast using regular enchanted tools, let alone no tools at all. And don't worry about the nether star catching fire in the lava, because if you place it like this, we can even have a hopper inside that makes sure that the item doesn't burn. Keeping this design cheap, yet 100% effective. Here's how you can get 37,000 pieces of cobble without even needing a proper TNT duplication machine. Since with this user's early game concept, we can make a fully automatic cobblestone farm without needing traditional things like silk touch for dead coral fans or even slime blocks since this layout with observers makes it fully possible to duplicate tnt without needing the standard blocks that we typically use and then if we have plenty of water on hand to blast proof our leaves we'll have the cheap blast chamber ready to collect all of our cobblestone and do it in a compact space if you've only got one water bucket don't sweat it you can still make an infinite water source since a simple way to do this is just to dig out a t-shape like so place one block and then pour your water bucket out like this user does and then once it's flowing into your new T-shape. You can use a piece of bone meal to create seagrass, and that new seagrass will turn all of the flowing water into a water source block, which could be insanely helpful in something like Skyblock, where the amount of resources that you have is pretty limited. And then after we got those extra water sources, we can just pull from the middle, because now we've got an infinite water source. And we did it all without an ocean or a second bucket, both of which I think is pretty impressive. If you don't have the materials to build a house to place your bed in, just sleep underwater. Now that sounds ridiculous, but it does actually work. If you're stuck at nighttime not able to sleep, because there's too many monsters nearby, simply swim down to the bottom of the nearest lake or pond, place down your bed, and you'll be able to sleep in it just the same. And better yet, the buoyant mobs won't even be able to chase after you, or at least they won't be able to do it fast enough to make it an issue for you. And then when morning comes, you can get out of the water and let them burn safely while you chill in a cool pool. All of which I'm glad to see. Instead of using obsidian to explosion proof your builds, you should try using leaves. It sounds crazy, but since 1.19, it's entirely possible to take our leaves, use a bucket to waterlog them, and they'll also be completely blast proof. So if you don't have the diamonds yet to make a blast chamber out of obsidian, I'd say that this is a whole lot cheaper. And plus, leaves and water are a lot more renewable to get than having some kind of obsidian farm like this, so I don't think that's a bad thing either, especially if you're on a budget. If you're trying to clear out a bunch of deep slate, it's gonna be a real hassle on your tools. But if you head down into the deep dark with a couple of blocks of moss and bone meal, then we could do it much faster and cheaper. Simply place down the moss, use bone meal to convert the deep slate, and then we can instantly 
actually mine that moss with something as low tier as a stone hoe, which really is a win-win-win situation. I mean, it's cheap, it's easy, and it's even faster than using a regular Efficiency 5 netherite pickaxe, since there's no way in the regular game to instant mine deep slate, which with all that considered, really makes the solution a no-brainer. But if you want to actually collect the deep slate instead of just getting rid of it, don't worry, the wither's got you covered. Sure enough, every time that you punch the wither, it'll break blocks around it when it's in its melee stage, meaning that if we have a wither chasing after us, we can apply a steady stream of damage to break bunches of deep slate blocks around it. And while we can't insta-mine the block, the wither can. And hey, at the end of it, you'll still be able to get yourself a nether star, meaning that you even get the full value out of the wither, which is more than helpful when you're trying to cut costs on multiple fronts. This might look like a doormat, and it is, but it also doubles as an effective way of keeping mobs out of your base. No joke, by just having this simple carpet laid out like so, we prevent most mobs from walking through two tall walkways. And since their pathfinding doesn't think that they can make it through, we can use this to keep certain mobs out or in a specific area that we want. And plus, having a couple of carpet pieces laying on your floor is a lot less distracting than having a fence or a guarded gate, meaning this works for both the form and the function. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?